This is 2016 Hearthstone, okay? So last time I did this video with 2015, we haven't had a rotation yet. This time we've had a rotation. Now you might be wondering what cards actually rotated. I don't know how Magic does it, but Hearthstone was very keen on having a base set in Hearthstone. So classic cards are still here. You remember your friend Yeti? He's still yeah. here. I actually, I want you to know, I put him in this one just for you. And I'm going to wait, wait to see what you say. Okay. All right. Okay, so all right, all right. I got to make that very clear. So the power level here actually significantly dropped because Curse of Nax Ramus, which was the set with Lotheb, was very powerful. And Goblins versus Gnomes rotated as well, which means Dr. Boom is no longer here. Dr. Ooh. Boom had a very short lived life in standard, but he is now gone. We have just to recap what expansions we currently have uh black rock mountain the grand tournament whispers of the old gods one night in karazhan and league of explorers um, one night in karazhan that sounds so whimsical it, that, that this so, was uh, this was a very whimsical expansion you were right what are the categories today top two which means it was played in the finals top 16 which means it was brought to the tournament and played at like basically the highest level of the tournament it was played in standard or it was outright bad and i want to make this very clear because i know i'm gonna get comments on this maybe i should just rage bait them but i don't know at all i'll talk about it this is at the time of this tournament babbling book <laughs> <laughs> what what tech do you think this is from? <laughs> I, I, this better be the whimsical one. Uh, this is what I care said. Yeah, this yeah, is from yeah. what I care said. Of course it is. It, that just sounds like a place where a book would yap. Um, <laughs> so one mana, one one battle cry at a random mage spell to your hand. All right, all right, all right. We have talked about like adding random spells and it does have a wide range like random spells can be bad for you but it this is at least class like locked in right a mage spell which mages are the spell category it's it, it the spell class really right yeah, yeah, they, they yeah, love yeah. spells more than anybody else they and by the way i'm well aware that minions are not spells and i just want <laughs> i i always want to make sure they know that all right um this so one mana, one, one draw a card is like, that's above rate. So get a random spell. If it's useful at all, that is good. So I say this is a top two card. This card is awesome. I would play it all the time. What the hell? That analysis was insane. You're entirely right. Uh, one of the best decks in the format was Tempo Mage. Tempo Mage was a deck that used a lot of like early game minions to get chip damage and then they would burn you out through spells. But Babbling Book, my good sir, is iconic. And the reason I showed you him first is because the winner of this tournament, Pavel, has basically named this card after himself. The community did called Paveling Book. And <laughs> branding. The I admire the branding. The reason is, is because some people would argue that he might not have deserved to win this tournament. He had one out in this game against his name was Amnesiac. This wasn't even the finals. And he played the book and got literally the perfect card. Like he did. There was only one card available that would save him in that position. And he got it. And he won that round. Or he won that, that group and went to the finals and ended up winning because of that. The momentum carried. If he didn't get that polymorph, he wouldn't have won this tournament. Let's just put it like that. What uh, is that like in, in size? That's like one in like what? 300 400 some, no it was like it was probably more like one in 70 i would say maybe one a little in less i still right insane still the, insane it was a really big moment and i think one of the reasons why amnesiac like lost after that was because he was just tilted which i don't even i can't even blame him for that babbling book is a top two card tempo mage was a pretty great deck barnes that that's it barnes okay wait why is this in a different language hold on <laughs> I, I was gonna have some problems with this uh Wait, you wanna try reading that one hold on <laughs> yeah 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 four mana three four grito di batala invoca una capea one one den uno es biro el rorio di tumazo can i guess can i guess what do you think of this uh create a one one copy of a random minion from your deck what the f are you him what the hell? Did you cheated I do it? Me. Did you I nail it? it? You did. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm on fire. That was that was word for word. What the fuck? Yo, he no cheated. way. Check his <laughs> check his PC. What the hell? <laughs> I, I, I just I, I what can I say? I speak holy, what language is that? <laughs> holy. I don't know. The card that, game god. That's that is the crazy. Most, that is the most American I've ever been on a, a video lately. Okay. <gasps> Summon a one one copy of a random minion in your deck. Yeah! Oh my god, that I did nail it. Uh how good is this card? 
Um, so four mana, three, four is meh, but a one, one copy of a random minion in your deck, like there's a tremendous range, right? There's a tremendous range. Tremendous range, yeah. Tremendous. Like what class is this? Is this neutral? Neutral. No. This is neutral. This it is? is neutral. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it can yeah. be in anything, but there's like, you're really, when you get the one, one copy, you don't get the battle cry. So. No, no, you do not. Yeah, so we need good death rattles. We need end of our turn. This thing happens. And there's probably a way to cheat with it, right? You you play this and the only other uh, minion in your deck is something insane. And maybe a control deck can do that. Is that all right? I feel like the card pool is going to be too small for, the, for that to be a very viable strategy. I, I feel like the ceiling is high and the floor is meh. Let's go. I'm going to hedge bets. Let's go to top 16. Okay, so Barnes was a very impactful card in the metagame. So there's multiple ways of playing this. One of them you actually kind of hit on. There's a way of you basically putting one minion in your deck besides Barnes, and people would actually run a deck like that. I'm not going to tell you what minion that is. I'm going to let you see that later. Um, but Barnes was actually mainly used, oddly enough, in Face Ash Hunter because... Hmm. You would, there are cards in Face Hunter, like Rag, like maybe not, maybe not Face Hunter is the right word, Mid Rain Hunter. You put, you put Rag, because if you got the 1 1 body of Rag, it doesn't matter. You already did a damage. There's a card called Savannah High Main, which you might have seen already from like your tournament plays. Yeah. So, like, there's a bunch of different ways for Barnes to just be a little bit useful. And obviously, sometimes you're just getting a 1 1, but in the right deck, this was a very impactful card. I'm going to ask you a question now. Do you think this is Hearthstone's most hated card of this year? Most hated? Most hated. It can't be. This was, I'm it telling you, dude, be. there's something really spicy about quoting this card out on turn three, playing this and getting a Savannah high main from it. And then you just lose the game from that position because you could never come back. It's just too much value. It's just it too was, strong. He was played a top two. He was a top two card. Arcane Giant. It is 12 mana. What? Okay, we'll get to it. 12 <laughs> mana crystal, 8-8, eight, eight, costs one less for each spell you've cast this game. Oh, gosh. I I, I know about your molten giant shenanigans. And there's this, there was some other giant in there. Mountain, it, probably, or sea giant. They're all yeah, they were all it, playable. It, some other some other handlock gianty thing. Um so this feels like a very doable thing. I know that minions are not spells, but <laughs> there's gotta be a deck that like gets gets it going on spells. Is this your let me think about like freeze mage, right? They really didn't put many things on the board, but they also didn't have access to a really cheap or potentially free 8-8 before, right? This is a diff this is a card that's new for this meta. This is from when I encares in. Yeah. Yeah. This is new. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like it want I feel like that deck wanted more damage. I think that this card is good. There's gotta be a deck that wants to play all those spells. Ooh, ooh, Rogue likes the spells. Rogue Rogue Miracle Rogue does spells. Uh yeah, yeah. Arcane Giant, top two card. Write it down. Okay, so you're right, but for different reasons is uh, what I'm going to give you. Rogue like this card, but it was much more prevalent in a different class. You want to guess what class that was? Oh God! Okay, um, <laughs> you you kind of you you made a you you made a smirky sound with your face when I said uh, okay. freeze mage. So I don't think it's mage. It's not freeze though, mage. I okay. promise you, it's not freeze mage. Okay, it didn't need more damage. It was fine. Mage. Okay. Priest? No, so actually, I don't even know if Priest is played. Uh, Priest was not doing very good right now. Uh, the, okay. The bat, the class that wanted this the most was Druid. Uh, Druid really liked this because they were playing some kind of weird Malagos Yog saron Druid, which went through a lot of different spells. So it all worked together in a beautiful package. And you know what's better than killing your opponent? Dropping a zero mana 8-8 eight eight while you're killing them. What the hell is this? <laughs> look at this! Look at this squiddy butt! Look at this buff freaking squid! Uh, they should sell body pillows. That's all I'm gonna say. Flame oh. wreathed faceless is huh? a four mana seven seven with overload two. Overload is basically you're you're gaining a tempo advantage to have a deficit next turn. So the following turn you'd have two mana crystals locked. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. I have my I have trouble putting my finger on what shaman equates to in magic terms you know they, they they're they're kind of dirtly you know they're, they're kind of grindy feels Shaman? like feels like so, it like with their totems and stuff but then sometimes they have a big whack weapon <laughs> I don't remember yeah it's, it's shaman called. shaman especially in the early days was very strange because they 
it, shaman's almost like the jack of all trades is how i would describe it like they kind of do everything they could be aggressive they could be combo they could be like board centric um so I, the question i need to figure out is like was did shaman make top two it, it, it is a weird class it it seems difficult to design for like you said it's aggressive right now it's like aggro shaman so you'd think it would play this but i have to decide on very limited info if shaman is a top two class and right now the only things you've shown me are top two cards and none of them have been shaman so <laughs> i the rate is good like if i'm not trying to meta this i'm sure this card got played i'll, I'll you've only shown me top two cards i i'm sensing a trend i'm i think you're trying to like set the table i'm gonna say this is a top two card okay so i want to let you in that aggro shaman was a very good deck it was absolutely played in like everyone's lineup the, the class is very good here they got a lot of very good cards fame Re flame refaceless was a card that was dropped off pretty early on uh when it first was revealed you could imagine the community around it four mana seven seven what the fuck were they thinking right like that looks broken yeah. but it ended up that a lot of people did cut it because of the fact that there were just better cards to be played in the deck. Four minutes, seven, seven is fine, but there are better things you can do tempo wise or just burn wise. Like you don't need the seven, seven to kill your opponents. The main reason why this this card was really good is another one I'm going to show you right here. OK, we've got Tunnel Trog, which is one mana for a one three. Whenever you overload, gain plus one attack per locked mana. Crystal grows. So yes. yeah, that was that, that was a card that would oh my god during that era. Remember Undertaker? I showed you Undertaker, right? Mm -hmm. This was a, almost the Undertaker of that era. Like very Ooh. very good card. Favorite Faceless really benefited off that card because Trog was released first, and there was a huge resurgence of Agar Shaman because of the Trog. But again, it was cut. It was only a top 16 card. The Boogie Monster. Oh, what's up, dude? I did tell you in the last episode, I have to show you this card. I don't I need to. to read it. This card's busted. Just look at it. Oh, my God. Uh, eight mana, six, seven. Whenever this attacks and kills a minion, gain plus two, plus two. So it gets bigger with everything it kills. He's That's the Boogie Monster. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Oh no, it's not good. It's too expensive. This has to like come out, survive a turn, and then it gets to attack and kill a minion because it has to be this. If it was whenever a minion of yours attacks and kills a minion, it would be epic. Oh. It would be epic. Would be but it's not. It's oh oh, it's bad, isn't it? This card is bad. Oh, I'm sorry. This card, this card saw no play. This card is bad. <laughs> this card is yeah, bad. Yeah, so unfortunately for the boogie monster. It's an eight mana six seven, and this is before Rush was introduced. So this card saw no play, and it was a very big meme in the Hearthstone community. I think your version of it might be a little broken, um, potentially if you drop it on like the right board. You're welcome, to, designers. To, Do it, you cowards. It, well, if they printed this card today, it would be definitely six mana, and it would have Rush. More importantly, in classic Hearthstone, there is a card called Boulder Fist Ogre, which did not really see any play in World Championships, but that card was a six mana six seven, which is very good stats for the cost. Now imagine adding two mana for that. On to the questing adventurer. Three mana, two, two. Whenever you play a card, gain plus one, plus one. That's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, whenever you play a card, man, I, I want to compare it to the shade. Remember the shade? I do remember the shade. Is, yep. is the shade still legal? The shade has rotated. The shade rotated. Okay, so there were like, here's shade at home, and every and and the people <laughs> rejoiced. Uh, I bet. So there's also a legendary right that is three mana two two, but it gains I believe plus two for each spell you played this turn or something like uh, that. So you're talking about Edwin, yeah? Uh, yeah, three Edwin. mana two two co combo plus two plus two for each card you played. Before yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So that's in the format, but that's like a legendary. You can only have that one. is a legendary. And yes. Yeah. So does this kind of make it as like Edwin's pre prequel, so to speak? You know, you play this first and then you play all the spells and you play your Edwin and you made this huge and you have huge Edwin. So it's like you have a good like one two punch there. I'm, I'm nervous that this card is too bad the turn you play it because at many points in magic, the especially competitive magic the turn three is the watershed moment of if it's three mana it has to do something beyond stats this is on turn three just stats and they're not good like i can see the potential for this card this card strikes me as scam though i'm gonna say this card was not played oh buddy 
I'm wrong. So you were wrong. <laughs> I'm so wrong. Okay. 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 So it's actually it's actually funny that you said it's like Edwin's like prequel. This card was actually released in classic. I just didn't show you this card. Okay. Uh, it's it took a little bit longer for questing adventure to really become a pop off card because here's the thing. Uh, in classic, Rogue had Miracle Rogue, which was like mm -hmm. the Leroy Jenkins Gadsden auctioneer like combo, which was infinitely better than what they were. Well, actually, I would say infinitely better. But that was like that was the real deck in classic. During Old Gods, Questing Adventure became a little bit more prevalent because of cards that also came up. But most importantly, people realized that I think I've showed you this card before. I just don't know if you remembered it. I'm going to show you it real fast. Oh, uh, yeah. Conceal. Uh, yeah. Yep. So a lot of classes didn't have an answer if you went Questing Adventure into Conceal. You would just play this, you would chill for a turn, and then the following turn, you would absolutely pop off and hopefully kill them in one blow. Cursed Blade is one mana for a 2 3 weapon? Yep. Question mark. Double um, all damage dealt to your hero. You can play this for one mana, but as long as it's there, anything dealt to you is doubled. And that also means, by the way, if you smack into a minion, it does do double damage to you. To you. Yeah, yeah, because that's right, because your face comes out of the thing, goes over and punches stuff. Yes, yes. the, the yes. fuel of my nightmares. Um, hmm. Three and the three armor means you use it three times and it dies. Yeah. Yep. If you equip this on turn one, it, like if you just have this from the get go, though, it's probably at least your opponent's first two minions are like dead. Probably. Maybe. Uh, and that makes me think it's good because that is good. That 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 that's good. I, I'm very worried about drawing this late in the game and just be like, if I play this, I'm dead. That, that scares me. That scares me. This card scares me. I'm gonna say, oh God, oh God. This is gonna be one of those things where I, I mean, I could be really wrong. I shouldn't hedge. I should not hedge. I should not go like top 16. I should, I should go hard one way or the other. Top two card, let's go. Hey, oh my God, sorry. I was praying there for a second. Oh my God. Uh, this card is ass. Duh! <laughs> No, so, no, come on. Equip it no, on turn one. Who I, cares? Listen, Who gives I a fuck about life? <laughs> <laughs> I showed you this card in particular because I knew your your magic goblin brain could not ignore how good this card was. I hate goblins and I disresemble that a mark. So <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's the thing. Curse Blade, in theory, is really good, just like you said, right? You're trading your life to get a, a tempo advantage, right? But what if, like, you're going against another aggro deck, and they're also trying to kill you, so that, therefore, you don't want to play this card, and you're kind of down a card, because, like, you don't want to take that extra damage. Also, like, what if, yeah, you draw later in the game, you don't really want to play it against bigger minions. Also, why would you want to double all damage to your hero? There's just a lot of things that don't make this card great. In fact, this is probably one of the worst cards they designed during this time. Not designed. Um, was added to the game because there was just no way for you to play. I think legitimately the way that they wanted you to play this was either a you get a board advantage, but also you just go super aggressive. Like you're you're racing your opponent was the motive, right? Mm -hmm. But they also printed other really good cards at the one drop slot. I'm not. I won't show you the card, but there's a card called Nazoth's First Captain, which was a one mana one one that gave you a one mana one three weapon. So still did three damage, but you also got the one one body. That card, by the way is going to make a significant impact in Mean Streets of Gaddison. One of the best one drops Warriors I've ever seen. Curse Blade was not it. Oh, God. Why is everything tentacles in this set? Okay. So o Old Gods was a tentacle set. Like, they, you'll you'll see the Old Gods soon. You'll see the Old Gods. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they knew what the people wanted, and they gave they it to them. They gave them the tentacles. Okay. Shifter Zerus is a one mana one one. And each turn this is in your hand, transform it into a random minion. Huh? Why would you throw off your curve potentially? Like, it, as soon as, like, it's turn three and you have nothing good to play and you're looking at this card or what used to be this card and it's some seven mana thing. And then the next turn, of course, it turns into a three. But now you're off, now you can't play that because you're off tempo. I no, th this this has to have too much downside, right? I uh, uh, no, this card's not playable. Don't tell me this card got played. <laughs> Do not tell me this card got played. So here's the thing about Shifter Zeris. Um, yeah, you're right. You, you wouldn't play it in a tempo deck uh, at all, right? You 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 don't want to put this in a tempo deck because you you would rather have just a solid one drop almost every single time. But he also wasn't played in anything else. Yeah, it was a pretty bad card. Okay, uh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> 
You troll. You monster. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. He, yeah, he was cool idea. I think it was the expansion beforehand. They had a card called Shifting Scrolls, which was for Mage, and it was the same concept. Like you leave it in your hand and it transforms to a random mage spell. That card didn't see any play. This card is the same concept. Mana Worm is a one mana, one three. And whenever you cast a spell, gain plus one attack. Yeah, there has to be like a spell deck that kind of wants that, right? Is this a class card? The board is for, different. So this is for Mage. Mage, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me add something here for you. Because you've okay. now watched World Championships before. Yeah, I'm experienced this, here. You might have seen this card already. This is a Tempo Mage card from Classic. Well, when you put it that way, it's confusing. Raren. It's like you know something I don't, and it feels unfair. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's just a good buddy. It's just a good card. I think I played this card in my brief forays in Hearthstone with my free-to-play account. I think I've played this card. Um, but God, did it get played at the World Championships? I believe the question with this card really is about, like, are your early spells good compared to, like, early minions or other things you can do? And it's not plus one plus one it's plus one attack i don't know at the world championships that's the thing the prestige like is mana worm have that have that quality to it does it have that pedigree is it seen in the hall of fame of hearthstone or is it just some little worm so let's go with not played oh god dude this card was nuts no! I knew it too. So it's there's a card. The worm. Oh. There's a card in Mage called Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is you probably have seen it before. Two mana, three two. Every one of your spells costs one less. That card with Mana Worm, especially if you played a one to two and you had other spells in your hand, was nuts. Also, the coin is a spell. And you so told you, me Tempo Mage is in the final. I, 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 I had all the information I needed to be right about this. And I, I absolutely good myself. It's it's okay. It's okay. Don't don't take it too hard. I showed you, I kind of kind of uh shifted your mindset after showing you Curse Blade into Shift Reserves there. So I, I don't blame you whatsoever. Okay, I've I've definitely seen this card. I've seen this card in my um I saw this card in duos. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and battlegrounds. battlegrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fun fact for you, by the way, Boogie Monster. When the first iteration of Battlegrounds came out, he was in it, and I think he was still bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes I sense. I can't remember, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he was bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Kindly grandmother is a two mana one one beast with death rattle. Summon a three two big bad wolf. And then the Big Bad Wolf is a two mana three two beast. I thought this card was pretty sick. Uh. It is like two mana for a four, three stats. It's just broken up a little bit. And of course the big bad wolf can't attack like the turn that you ram your grandmother into a wall of some uh? kind. Here's the point. It's not actually the grandmother ever. It's always the wolf. That's why the death rattle thing doesn't, it doesn't quite make sense for the story, does it, right? Because you don't kill your grandmother and then a wolf pops out, okay? It was always the wolf. <laughs> All right. You're so right. You're so right. So let's be real here. Nobody's ramming the grandmother. <laughs> I don't know. Hunter Hunter has pretty good rates on their minions. This is good rate. Uh, it's just, mm. although I'm I, like, if you're on the draw, well, then you have the coin. You just slam this thing and the opponent's first two plays are probably pretty meh. It's, I, I haven't seen any other Hunter cards. This one seems fine. I'm going to say finals card. This card was mainly used in Face Hunter because what Face Hunter would want to do is just play really good statted minions. And then if you have to kill those minions because you have to protect yourself. But if you kill the Kindly Grandmother, then you get a 3-2 to deal with. And that could be a little annoying. On top of that, it is a beast. And there was another card called Houndmaster, which uh, gave a beast plus two, plus two in taunt. So you kind of had to kill the Kindly Grandmother at some point and you couldn't leave it on the board because that would be, you know, you get plus two, plus two guaranteed, which is very scary. This was played in top two for a face hunter deck. This is Yogg. You want to read Yogg again so you remember what he does? I would love to read Yogg. Okay, yeah. this is a 10 mana. Yogg Sauron hopes end. Seven, five. Battle cry, cast a random spell for each spell you've cast this game and the targets are chosen randomly. Okay, so what I showed you Yogg the first time, mm -hmm. I didn't give you any context on the metagame or what happened to Yogg. I just asked you, do you think Yogg Strong was good? I can't remember the answer you gave me. I'm pretty sure you're just the best reviewer of all time, so you said he was good. But, <laughs> Jess, 
just before this world championship, just before it, Yogg Saron got a pretty significant nerf. And that nerf, I'm going to read for you verbatim, is Yogg Saron will now stop casting spells if it is destroyed, silenced, transformed, or returned to hand. So what happened previously is this was like an emergency button. So if you play Yogg and you know, you're behind, you play this, even if it died and it cleared the board, it would still cast spells. So majority of the time it would equal the playing field. Now there's a huge like, you know, variable there that if he actually ends his own life and there are a lot of spells that could kill him in one blow before even interacting with the board, Yogg-Saron stops casting spells and you basically cast a 10 mana do nothing. But the question is, was Yogg-Saron played at this tournament? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So Come on, tentacles. Let's I can't remember go. what, the, what the, the prize pool, by the way, for this was 1 million USD. Yeah. So the winner here got $250,000. Are Life you putting changing money? Very much so. Very much so. Are you willing to put Yogg Saron into your lineup? Yeah. Is it even a question? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I mean, RNG, right? But R like RNG. this is one of the cards that gets you like uh, you even sent me some clips, right? And I have no idea if they were from this tournament or not. I don't remember. But what cards are going to get you out of those situations, man? When the whole world's against you, your opponent has like seven <laughs> cards in hand and you've got one draw. One shot, one opportunity. Oh, so you're, you're saying everything you've ever wanted. This you're saying this is the card you put into your deck. Worst case scenario, still no matter the nerf. Look, I don't need to say that this card is like in every deck. I just need some druid gamer with too much mana to play it. Okay, and they're Fair gonna enough. and they will. So this is a top two card. Yeah, this is a top two card. This yeah, is a top two card. it's it, it's funny though because that. <laughs> I can't remember how much like I showed you the one tournament where he was like the most iconic card and they nerfed him like pretty significantly after because like that's very, very frustrating um, to lose your entire like world championship potential to one card. So they nerfed him because like obviously they didn't want it to be as competitively viable, but he was still really good. Like it's so funny that Yogg Saron was so prevalent amongst all of these old gods, which brings me to the old gods uh, other than Yogg. Why char it? Why charge it? Why Yasharaj. Ya ya what? Yasharaj. Rage Unbound. I can relate to the rest of it. Uh, all right. <laughs> 10 mana, 10, 10. At the end of your turn, put a minion from your deck onto the battlefield. Hmm. Hmm. Exciting. I, again, I'm, I'm trying to think about cheating, right? So, like, is there a minion that goes so perfectly with this? But it's 10 mana, right? So almost any minion you would have... Like, if you only have, like, one minion in your deck that you want to pair with this, you would have drawn it by now a lot of the time. Oh, is this card good? Oh, I mean, it is value, and it is thick. I don't know. I just, same argument with Yogg, right? I need one druid gamer to be like, this is the tits. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say top 16. I just need one maniac to to think this so card is good So, as far enough. as I could tell, I did not see Yashraz get played in this tournament. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, fine. But, but, let me give you some history here. Let me give you some history here. Can you go back and scroll to the second card I showed you? Okay. When I showed you Bards the first time, I told you that there was one card that worked really well with it. And this is the card. So what yeah. people would do in the early days of, like, Old Gods and Barns is they would play Barns on turn four. This would pull the copy of Yashraj. And then because Yashraj is the only card in, or only minion in your deck, it would pull the 10-10 on turn four. Which in those days of Hearthstone was really good. And that was a scam every single time, unless you had an immediate removal for Yashraj. Nzoth. 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 I'm just. Nzoth. 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 Okay. Nzoth the Corrupter. 10 mana, 5 7, Battle Cry. Summon your Death Rattle minions that died this game. This one's a Battle Cry, so scamming this one doesn't get you that thing. The, no, no, you need to you need to play it from here. Yeah, I mean, what happens? So I don't actually know the answer to this. You have a max amount of slots on your board, right? What happens if you summon more death rattle minions than you have slots on the board? Do you get the death rattles for the ones that don't fit? No, it would only fill up to seven. So you it, it would be completely random, by the way, it just pulls it from the random death rattle pool. Like it's not consistently in order. So okay. 
Okay. There's there's a little bit of randomness to this. I mean, it depends on your death rattle minions, and there's uh, a handful of them that I know, but like ten mana seems like too much for this. This seems like this card seems not good to me. The, I like and and maybe there's some context I'm missing of like some really A plus like death rattles, right? Maybe there's the Doctor Boom of death rattle, but I just don't like this one. I don't see it. This one I want to say zero. You call this card bad? Yeah. In Old Gods, before One Night in Karazhan was released, this was actually a really good card. Really good. And Nazoth actually only got better with more death battles added to the game, obviously, because the better consistency of death battles, the more likely you are to play this. The class that really liked this is Warrior, because Warrior liked to protect itself. It would tank up and then eventually drop Nazoth, and then you probably couldn't kill them past that point. In this tournament, Nazoth didn't see a lot of play, but at least he saw a play compared to Yashiraj, because this was a top 16 card. I think, oh, one, okay. I think one person brought it. And obviously, I'm not giving you the context of death rattles, but I think you could see just as a card game player that like this is a win condition in itself. You just it's a one card win condition if you have enough good death battles. And like Sylvanas is still in the game. You probably remember Sylvanas, six mana five five, still a random minion uh, from your opponent. Uh -huh. like th those type of effects are still around. So Nazoth Warrior wasn't a horrible deck. Uh, but the better I'm going to just show you the old gods. So you have a context of like the last one here, because this one was actually the probably the most prevalent other than is a great image here. This is the last one. Top top left card is the, the one I'm talking about, but that, that's like it's full package. <laughs> Wait, that's the package. That's that's the every card. This? So this is Cthulhu. Yeah, Cthulhu is the I mean, Yaxron ended up being the most iconic for sure, but Cthulhu was like the poster child for this expansion. Um, and he was given to every single person for free if you play during Old Gods. In fact, if you go open an Old Gods pack right now, you can get this card for free. Uh, and Cthulhu, like, obviously, I'm not going to tell you to rate this card because this card was very good. Uh, probably the second best other than Yogg, especially bef uh, after the nerf. I think it was definitely like neck and neck with Yogg almost. Uh, most decks could run this, but this was a really good deck in slower matchups. Right. Cthulhu can build up to a good win condition. You have the ability to shuffle another one back into your deck. And most importantly, it did a lot of damage from hand. I mean, they didn't give you a card. They gave you a deck. They like gave they, you a go, they gave, go forth and do this. Yeah, they gave you Cthulhu and Becker of Evil, which is the one next to it. The rest of them you had to open. But like the great thing about Cthulhu was the playable ones were usually commons. And yeah, that's like what I'm one looking there. at. Yeah, they're like they're they're not. It, it doesn't look like it's that hard to get these cards. And no, obviously they're going to be in a ton of packs. So you don't need that many packs to have a Cthulhu shell, yes. right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. So Cthulhu was, Cthulhu was great. Cthulhu was a really, really good card. Um, yeah, I, I, it's just hot, tough because I wouldn't have you rate it on its own because it is like an entire package. Like it really needed to see the entire thing. But we don't have time for that because um, I have to show you two other cards. Okay. You know, I came in so hot in this video and I've I I have tanked hard. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You, you just finish strong, finish strong. That's what people remember at the end of the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th three mana, three one charge. That's a wolf rider. It gets on a wolf and it <laughs> rides a, that the wolf is a and wolf it go rider. fast. It go fast. Why would you show me this? It, it's it's so it's so obvious. Uh, is it is it obvious it's it's three phase damage on a minion i charge seems so much better in hearthstone than like haste in magic and haste is already like insane in magic um because charge they just can't interact with it and then you have hand buffs right you make this thing big and it hits harder this is generic right this is neutral yep yeah yeah so it, like sure i don't look like i belong in some tempo mage strategy but i'll get the job done so yeah, th let's go with let's go with top two wolf rider, three mana, three one face, easy. <laughs> best card, best card, <laughs> right? Uh, you're right. By the way, charge. I think in Hearthstone's history has been the best mechanic ever. Like it's it's really 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 good because you can't interact with it like at all. Like you you in Magic you have ways to interact with your opponent's turn. Like if a charge minion is played, like you have to be pre set up for it, which makes Leroy Jenkins like a really powerful card. Wolf rider was played in that face aggro deck I was speaking about earlier in the top two. It was played as a one of. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just need a three, baby. You I just need thought, three I thought I more show damage. You but all of the cards before this moment are irrelevant because this is your final challenge. And in fact, this is the most difficult card to evaluate out of all of this. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I was already know what it is. <laughs> this card played. <laughs> Oh no! Oh 
no. Okay, all the tools. All the tools. You say you've given me all the tools. Chill when Yeti is, uh, by the way, I'm aware of the stat line. I think we all are now. Four mana, four, five, nothing. <laughs> the, the turn two rock star of Druid from 2014 is back in 2016. But is he the same? We're, this is a card by card breakdown right here. 1-1 one, one versus 4-5. Doesn't matter what random mage spell they got. Probably can't deal with a Yeti. <laughs> right, right, right. Soloed. Barnes. 3-4. Don't make me laugh. Yeti has the stats of Barnes on its own. <laughs> without any stupid random text from the battle cry. All right. Just, just trades with both of them. No problem. Dead. Arcane Giant. Don't make me laugh. You're casting spells. I'm punching you with a Yeti. All right. <laughs> Okay, four mana, seven, seven's a bit, <laughs> a bit tough for a Yeti. Let's be real. <laughs> the Faceless. The Faceless is, is giving Yeti a bit of a hard time. And it was barely played in this. Okay. And it was a one of. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, that's not looking good for the Yeti. I mean, a, man, a mana worm has no chance of ever trading with a Yeti. A mana worm has no so, chance. So true. So <laughs> true. So, you could never, never do it. You could put a big bad wolf with the kindly grandmother and they've got nothing on a yeti all right after rotation did this come back i know you put this here to troll me i know you did if it were ever going to be in another tournament it's very likely it would be this one because this is the first rotation and you mentioned it got powered down quite a bit if it were ever going to return it would be this one <sighs> So like, I, like I'm going to have to say no Yeti in all the rest of the videos. And I only need one. I just need one boomer to believe in this Yeti <laughs> for it to be a top 16 card, which is an amazing pedigree for a generic four man of four or five. I I'm doubling down. I might be coping forever. There were no Yetis in the top 16. A You're am right. I right? You're right. Oh, so, God, thank God. Thing, do you know what I would go through? <laughs> If, do you know the crisis I would have? Okay. So here's the thing about Yeti is Yeti was played in classic because of the tempo mage variant or tempo druid variant that was around, right? Like you get Yeti, you get the chip damage, you have force of nature, savage roar to finish off your opponent. At this point in time, savage roar, sorry, uh, force of nature has been changed. It is a absolute dog shit card now. Like it's awful, um, which means druid had to somewhat change their play style a little bit. And I actually already gave you the tools for this. Druid was playing a spell heavy deck, right? Mm -hmm. Arcane mm -hmm. Giants, Yogg Saron was there. So you didn't really want the Yeti. You kind of wanted just to play more spells and get your Yogg Saron juiced up or play the Arcane Giants earlier. So there was no reason for any class to play Chillwind Yeti because of the fact that Druid just had a better build and no other classes wanted a Chillwind Yeti. So unfortunately for Chillwind Yeti, he, uh, he was not played. Uh, I would say that he wasn't a bad card still. Like he was fine, but he he just yeah he 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 his time his time in Hearthstone has definitely outgrown him, and I will not be showing you Chillin Yeti for the rest of these videos because he just does not see play after this point. Oh, I thought I had a free roll. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, but uh, F's, F's in the chat for the Yeti. F's in the chat for sure for Yeti. 